They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. But he came and he died and he rose. Those walls are rubble now. Remember those giants we called death and grave. They were like mountains that stood in our way. But he came. And he died, and he rose, those giants are dead now. This is our God, this is who he is, he loves us. This is our God, this is what he does, he saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim, this is our God. Remember that fear that took our breath away Faith so weak that we could barely pray But he heard every word, every whisper Now those altars in the wilderness the story of his faithfulness never once did he fail and he never will this is our god this is who he is he loves us this is our god this is what he does he saves us he bore the cross beat the grave let heaven but Jesus who pulled me out of that pit he did he did who paid for all of our sins nobody but Jesus who rescued me from that grave Yahweh Yahweh who gets the glory and praise nobody but Jesus who rescued me from that grave Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise? Nobody but Him. This is our God. This is who He is. He loves us. This is our God. This is what He does. He saves us. He pulled the cross, beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God. All right, church, I want to see you excited this morning now. Come on and sing with us. There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of a gospel song. Once you choose it, you can't lose it. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got a heart. Turn the mountains that I can't find. 
Church, put your hands together. Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that gospel beat, cause he's all you'll ever need. All you'll ever need. Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that gospel beat, cause he's all you'll ever need. All you'll ever need. I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing because I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there.
talking about three wooden crosses upon a hill for everyone to see the sinners on the outside couldn't save themselves if they tried all I could think is man that sounds like me as I've been the one on the left full of guilt and regret long gone on the wrong side of living I've been the one on the right, always looking for a fight, thinking I could never be forgiven. I'm standing here today, overwhelmed by grace, cause I know who paid my cost. Thank God for the man on the middle cross. He didn't have to do it, but for me, he went through it. A love like that I'll never understand Lord knows I don't deserve it But for me He was worth it Who oh, mercy rained down on this desperate man Cause I've been the one on the left for the killed and regret Long gone on the wrong side of living I've been the one on the right Always looking for a fight, thinking I can never be forgiven. I'm standing here today, overwhelmed by grace, cause I know who paid my cost. Thank God for the man on the middle cross. The cross is where he went, over oh, that ain't where he stayed. He brought me back to life when he rose up out of. Someday I'll stand before him and I'll see Jesus face to face. I'll worship and adore him for a life forever changed. Cause I've been the one on the left full of guilt and regret, long gone on the wrong side of living. I've been the one on the right, always looking for a fight, thinking I could never be forgiven. I'm standing here today, overwhelmed by grace, cause I know who paid my cost. Thank God for the man on the middle cross. Thank God for the man on the middle cross. I want to read a psalm for you this morning and try to bring a word about what this psalm is addressing. Psalm 92. It was in my list of readings this week, and it really touched my heart. Uh, not the only psalm that was in my list this week. The readings that I'm doing this year have a section of psalms every day as a part of the daily reading, but this one was in this week's reading, and uh, God just really touched my heart with it. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Think about that verse, every morning thanking Him for His love. Not knowing what's going to happen that day, not knowing what's waiting around the bend. It may be something good. It may be something difficult. 
But one thing we can be sure of is that it goes, it comes to us through the hands of a loving God. And so every morning we thank him for his love and every night we thank him for his faithfulness because we can see in the course of that day that God has been with us. And um, it's amazing how God continues to reach into our lives from day to day. He says in verse 3, let this love and faithfulness that we're praising you for uh, be put to music, the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make glad by your deeds, Lord. I will sing for joy what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord. How profound your thoughts. Senseless people do not know, fools don't understand, that, through, that though the wicked spring up like grass and all evil, evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are forever exalted. For surely your enemies, Lord, surely your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. You've exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. Fine oils have been poured on me. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, The Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. And the, when you look at the, the subtitle that's in the NIV, right underneath Psalm 92, it says, A psalm, a song for the Sabbath day. Every Sunday we come together. It's not the Sabbath day. It's the Lord's day in the Christian tradition. But every Lord's day we come together, and a part of our coming together uh, has to do with us singing songs of praise to the Lord. I'm thankful for those songs. I'm thankful for the way that they express the faith that has become personal for all of us. You'll be singing along and there'll be a particular phrase in a song and it almost hits you just like unexpectedly and you're like, oh, wow. I w that's exactly how I would express that. That's exactly how I would thank the Lord for his goodness in this moment. I'm so thankful for Kevin Jarvis and our praise team and our praise band, aren't you? Every week, um, Kevin prays, Lord, show me the songs that you would have us to sing and put them in our hearts. Uh, and then the praise team comes on Sunday morning and they practice for about an hour in the band getting ready for this service. And then on Wednesday nights, a group of y'all lead uh, songs of worship um, when we gather for Bible study. And it's so important. It's so much a part of what happens in our lives as God meets with us and brings his truth to our lives. And I'm just so thankful for, for music and what it does to help bring the truth to our hearts. Music is powerful. Um, when, when I go to sleep at night... I, there's this contraption that sits on the nightstand that's called a sleep mate. And it sounds like a fan running. Now, when I was a kid, all the way into my college years, I slept in the dark and in the quiet. I, I, I wanted no light and I wanted no noise. And then I married this girl who had to have a fan running and had to have a nightlight on. And it took me months, maybe even more than a year, to get adjusted to a nightlight and a fan. And it was a fan back then. And sometimes you didn't need a fan, but the fan was running so you could hear the hum. And so we're in church in Columbia one Wednesday night, and we had prayer groups that, that would meet as a part of our Wednesday night prayer time. And Becky was in a, a prayer group with... Um, a couple and another individual, and I don't know how it came up, but it came up that Beck had to have a fan running in order to sleep, and I really didn't like the fan running, and this lady 
said, her name uh, was Miss Joy, and she said, you need to get a sleep mate. And Beck's like, what? <laughs> and she said, it's this little thing that sits on your nightstand, and it sounds like a fan, but it's not a fan. And so now, if, if I don't have that running, I've got to have some noise, and I've got to have a light on. So as we've been going through this, this three months of Becky's uh, illness, I have spent probably half of my time at Harold and Diane so I don't have to drive back and forth to Sumter every day. And I go into the room and there's no night light, but there's enough light from outside coming in the window. I've got the light, but there's no fan and I, and I don't remember to take that. I turn my phone on and I listen to music. And the music, just music, not, not lyrics, just and it's better if I don't know the song because then I'm singing along with it and not going to sleep. So I, I just put like classical music on. And music is powerful. It, it's a powerful, soothing presence in our lives. And the psalmist says, as I bring my praise to you, it's put to music. And it becomes a powerful presence presence, if you will, a powerful something that God uses in our lives. It's amazing what can get into our souls by way of music. If you, if you agree with that, can I hear an amen? I mean, it's, it, it's amazing. It's powerful. And so when we come together from week to week and Kevin and, and the praise team are leading us in worship, it is a powerful moment of our coming together into the presence of the Lord. And I just wanted to say this morning, I am thankful for the praise that takes place in our church and in churches all around the globe that people dedicate their talents, their musical talents, to helping us come into his presence. And I don't ever want to take that for granted. Becky's been listening to some praise music. And God's been using it in her in her soul and in her life. And I am thankful for what praise accomplishes in all of our lives. Y'all, we got to get our eyes off our problems and get our eyes on God. And it's hard to do sometimes because sometimes the problems are so persistent and so multifaceted that it, it's difficult. But as we turn our hearts and our minds to the songs of worship that God would have us to, to focus on. It is amazing how he speaks to us through the praise that he brings to our attention. I don't know how many times Christy would, would write me when she was driving back and forth every day to, to the hospital to see Beck. She would, say, she would send Tommy and I a text, and she'd say, y'all need to listen to this. And it was all, she said it was almost like whatever was going on, God would put just the right song in her songs that were playing from her phone to her car speaker. And it was like this, God wanted us to hear this today. And over and over again, God would reach in through, through these praise songs to remind us of who he is and what he is doing, and how that we need to trust in his love every morning and go to sleep thanking him for his faithfulness every night. Our God is amazing, and there's nothing that is beyond his reach in our lives, whether it's physical in nature or spiritual in nature or psychological in nature, there is nothing that is beyond his reach in our lives. The thing is, we have to make ourselves available for his touch. And that's where faith comes in, where we surrender ourselves to him. I surrender all, we just sang, where we surrender ourselves to him and say, God, would you please, in this moment, would you please bring your touch? And Lord, you may want to touch me directly. You may want to touch me through one of your servants. But Lord, bring your touch to my life in this moment in the way that I need it. And over and over again, God reaches in. And I'm thankful for, for all that he does in each of our lives. Styles of music vary. Some folks want one style over another. But Lord, help us all to, maybe sometimes we have a preference, but Lord, help us to appreciate what other people appreciate as well. 
And Lord, help us to get beyond styles and help us to listen to the lyrics, to the words, to the message that is being communicated through whatever style of praise music is being used in that given moment, that, that we might be able to hear what it is that God is wanting to bring to powerful expression in our experience, that our faith might be encouraged. James says when you're going through trials of all kinds, give thanks for those trials because they are testing your faith. They are bringing you to a place where you will trust God in a new way, that you will trust Him beyond how you've ever trusted Him before. And I pray today that we will, that we will trust Him with whatever, whatever is happening in our lives, that we would come before Him with a spirit of thanksgiving, just as the psalmist is declaring in Psalm 92, that, that we would remember that God is doing something that is beyond what we can understand in any given moment. That we would understand that in thanksgiving we bring our praises before Him because we know that His love will not leave us without exactly what we need at any given moment in our journey. What are you going through right now? And have you availed yourself to what it is that God is wanting to bring to completion in you? Are you fighting His presence in your life? Are you resisting the grace that He is wanting to pour out in your experience? Open yourself to Him today. You don't have to understand everything. You, you don't have to be able to put it into words always. Just an honest coming before Him and surrender. To say, Lord, I, I want you and I want your touch in my life. I want you to bring to completion what it is that you are wanting to bring to completion in me. To be able to say to the Lord, Lord, I don't understand. Um, Lord, I wish it weren't this way. But in the midst of all that, of that, to be able to know that God has not abandoned us, but that he, that he is working in and through us that Jesus might be exalted not only to us, but through us. I've been watching Beck through the, y'all, three months we've been on this road. And all but three weeks of that, she's been in the hospital. And I've been watching her with the people who come in and, and tend to her needs, doctors, nurses, technicians, and now she's at a place where she's able to say to them, she'll meet somebody for the first time and she'll say to them something like, I just want you to know that I'm a miracle. And some of them have um, availed themselves to her medical record and have looked and, and so especially the doctors coming in will say, you absolutely are a miracle. And it's amazing how good you look with everything that you've been through. I, we've, we hear him say it over and over again. But as Becky has been sharing with them how God has touched her and brought her through all these different uh, challenges that she's been faced with, he uses that to help them open up their hearts. And some of them are believers. And then they'll begin to share their story. And Becky's story encourages them, and their story encourages her. And I'm sitting there front row watching all of this, and it is amazing. Um, this one girl came in the other day and, and was bringing Becky her uh, lunch, I think it was. And Becky uh, looked at her and said, you are gorgeous. And the young lady said, you are beautiful too. And she said, oh, come on, look, look, look at me. Ron, show her a pic, that picture of you and, and me when, when we were fixed up in front of the Christmas tree at church. And I, I've got it on my phone. And so I showed, showed her, and that girl said, you are beautiful. And Becky said, uh, right now, more beautiful on the inside than the outside, but God has made all of us beautiful. And it is amazing what happens when we begin to express our faith and we begin to share our testimony. And a lot of times we hold back. And I've been learning as we've been traveling this road, as, as Becky is able to share her faith and as Becky is able to rejoice in her, her healing and her victory, 
it is incredible how God is using that in the lives of people, and some of them are quick to say, yes, God is good, and then they'll tell their story, and then someone else, you can tell maybe they're not right where they want to be or maybe where they should be as, as we would perceive it, but they are listening, and God is using those moments to help them come to a, an awareness in that moment of his presence, even in the midst of, of difficulties. Y'all, we don't praise the Lord enough. And sometimes when we're even here and it's the moment of praise, we allow ourselves to be distracted from wholeheartedly bringing our, our, our thanksgiving and our praise before him. Jesus said, if we don't praise him, the rocks will cry out, which is to say he is worthy of our praise. Lord, help us to get our eyes off of ourselves so much and help us to get our help us to get our eyes on Jesus more and more thanking him for his love and his faithfulness thanking him for the miraculous things that he is doing all the time I have gotten an education in these three months on the digestion of food. And I never thought about it before. Y'all, we just eat. And I'm going to tell you, some of the things we eat, it's amazing we're sitting here drawing our next breath. Because I, I've, been, I've been Googling it. And I've been listening to what the doctors say, and I've, I've been paying attention to everything that's been going on. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And the fact that you got up this morning and you ate whatever you ate for breakfast, and your body is processing that as fuel for your well-being, and it'll even take some of the bad stuff and process it in such a way that it, it will get whatever good it can get out of it. I don't know how much good my body got out of that Murray's donut this morning. But the more I read, the more miraculous it is that, it, that, it, that I'm surviving Murray's donuts every Sunday, you know? What, what am I saying? What I'm saying is, if we wouldn't take so much for granted, we would praise God more. We would praise God for the way that he has created us. Our physical being is miraculous. I remember a doctor friend of mine years ago, we went to church together in Columbia, and then he felt God's nudging for him to become a doctor, and he became a cardiologist. And he told me, he said, Ron, as I was going through medical school, he said, when we did uh, our anatomy class, just the, the, the miracle of hearing alone, how anybody could study how we hear, how the brain is connected and, and, and all of these bones are put in just such a place where, where sound waves can echo in such a way that it becomes intelligible sound to our understanding. He said, it is amazing what God has created by way of our hearing. It is amazing how anybody could study the human body and not believe in a God is incredible. This did not just evolve. God created us to be who we are. And the more we become aware of his love and his faithfulness, the more we are brought to praise in his presence for who he is and for what he's doing. We were created to live on this planet for a little while. The Bible says three score and ten and if you're really blessed, four score, 70, three score and 10, four score 80. But we were created to be forever in his presence. And the only way we will not be forever in his presence is if we refuse to be forever in his presence. And the way you refuse to be forever in his presence is to turn your back on Jesus. 
You say, well, I, I, I feel like I've lived a pretty good life. I feel like the good outweighs the bad. I hate to bust your bubble. I got bad news for you. The Bible says, if you break one law, you're guilty of the whole law. Say, I've never stolen anything in my life. I've, I've never uh, committed adultery. I've gone to church every Sunday. I put my offering or tithe in the plate every week. I've, I've done all of it. Sounds like the rich young ruler. I've kept all of these from my youth. But, but all, all that has, have you ever dishonored your father or mother? Have you ever taken something that didn't belong to you? I mean, a pen from the office, a quarter from your mama's purse when you were younger. The Bible says if, we've, if we have any infraction, we're lawbreakers. The Bible says everybody has sinned and fall short of God's glory. Everybody. The Bible says the wages of sin is what, Vernon? Death. Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through His Son, Jesus. Don't turn your back on Jesus. I don't care who you are or how good you think you've been. Everybody needs Salvation through Jesus. Everybody. You were created to be forever in His presence. And Jesus is your opportunity to be forever in His presence. You're going to leave this planet. We are like the grass of the field, the Bible says. Becky is receiving her healing at this time. But Becky and Ron and our kids and our grandkids and you and your kids and your grandkids have an appointment with eternity. One day we're going to draw our last breath on this planet. We're never ready for it. We might be prepared. But we're never ready to leave our loved ones. That's the difficult part. But we're going to. My prayer is that your trust is in Jesus for your salvation. So that when you take your last breath here, you'll take your next breath on streets of gold. The psalmist says, Lord, every week we come before you with singing, with praise, with thanksgiving. Because we know that you love us. And we know that you're faithful to take care of us. And we know that when we lay our heads down, not knowing whether or not we'll wake up the next morning, that you're faithful. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness that, that even, if we, even if I were to die in my sleep, I can rest assured that you never sleep. And if my moment comes in the least expected moment, that you will be there to safely take me home. Yeah. We have a lot to be thankful for. We don't praise Him enough. I want you to praise Him right now, just in quietness. I don't want you to shout. We're not, I don't want you to sing right now. We'll sing in a minute. But I want you right now just to take a moment to say, Lord, I want to thank you for your love, and I want to thank you for your faithfulness. And then if you want to add something in particular to that, add something. I'm, here's what I'm, Lord, I want to thank you for being with Beck and helping us through this time. And I want to thank you for the angels who wear scrubs 
that have been taking care of her during this season. Now I want you to thank him for his love and for his faithfulness. Just in the quietness of your soul right now, will you? Thank him. Praise him. Praise team, come. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord. How profound your thoughts. Lord, we just want to praise you. We want to thank you for the lives that you have given us, for the strength that you give us from day to day, for the mysteries of this body that you have created, how we can hear, how we can speak, how we can digest food for, for energy to live the lives that you've given us, for the muscles and the nervous system and the circulatory system, all these different wonders that make up our physical being that we just come to take for granted. We thank you for that today. But then, Lord, we also thank you that we can think higher than the animals, that we are able to, to know you, to think about you, to learn about you, to learn your ways and to walk in your ways. That we can give our attention to philosophical truths. That we can live at a plane that is represented in the words created in the image of God. Lord, we praise you for who you are and for what you're doing in our lives. And whatever we've been taking for granted, I pray this morning that your spirit would awaken us to the glory of the things that we haven't given a second thought. This week, Lord, let our hearts be filled to overflowing with praises for who you are and for what you're doing. You are good all the time, even when we don't understand your goodness. Thank you for your love and your faithfulness.
I belong. I belong. 